In this video, I just want to talk about some of the different uh, sources, the different places you can go online when you're doing research and talk about some of the characteristics that each have because each have certain advantages and certain disadvantages. And I recommend using all of these. Uh, so there are three main uh, places that I would suggest that you go to do your research. One is Google. I say Google, but you could use another search engine if you wanted to. Um, Google also has a separate service called Google Scholar, which is really quite neat, and I'll talk about that in a minute. And then uh, the library, Klein Library, has all kinds of databases. So there are library databases. Okay, so what are the differences between these? Well, if you are searching Google, you're just essentially searching the entire internet. There are some exceptions. There's things that Google will filter out and not include in the search. It's quite an intelligent search uh, and it's a great service, but it's essentially going to give you everything. It's going to comb through everything, meaning um, it's going to give you some academic publications. It's going to give you some scientific journal articles, sure, but it's also going to give you lots of uh, non-scientific, unscientific things. It's going to give you uh, pages, web pages published by universities that are have very accurate or reliable information some of the time. And it's going to give you pages uh, of, with pseudoscience, stuff that looks really good, uh, but if you check into it, there's, there's no research to actually support it. Um, it's going to give you uh, news, and it's going to give you fake news, which something that's been a real issue lately is there's all these sites out there that, that look like they're reporting legitimate, authentic news, uh, but it's, it's completely fabricated, deliberately fabricated in order to make the author's money. Um, so there are advantages and disadvantages to that, and we'll talk about that in a minute, but let me just go through the other two. So Google Scholar, what it does uh, is it actually has an, uh, an algorithm that is specifically going to try to limit the results or focus the results on what might call academic sources. And so academic and professional. Uh, I say professional because, uh, for example, it will also uh, give you patent uh, applications or, or patents that are held by people if you if you search for certain things. So it's not just limited to scientific journal articles. It's going to try to comb anything that's sort of in the academic and professional realm. It'll also shoot back uh, uh, book results uh, if they seem relevant. Um, but it's not going to give you personal websites or, uh, or, or Wikipedia, for example. It is limited to academic and professional uh, sources. Library databases are very similar. They're also going to give you only, or at least mostly, results from uh, academic and professional sources. Um, the difference between these two is that the, the library databases, uh, these are reviewed, usually reviewed by, uh, by people, by scholars, uh, and other professionals. In other words, there's somewhere along the line, there are some experts who are overseeing this and saying, yeah, these are good sources, those are not good sources. In contrast, Google Scholar, uh, this is actually, it's, it's filtered not by people, at least not directly, it's filtered by an algorithm. And you don't have to really understand what an algorithm is. Basically, the bottom line is it's the, the, the sources are selected by a computer program, right? Just like with, uh, with the Google search engine in general, in this case, the algorithm is set to be more specific. It's going to filter it to academic and professional sources for the most part, um, but it's still done by a computer program. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing or a good thing, you know, it just depends on, on what you're wanting. Uh, it means that it is not going to, in a sense, be vulnerable to bias. But on the other hand, it also, uh, which, you know, even, which the scholars and professionals, these guys over here, these are human beings. So even though they're trying to 
maybe be very systematic about what they're including in a database or not. Um, you know, they, they might exclude some things that they consider unscientific. Well, maybe those things are just really revolutionary ideas. Uh, Google Scholar, on the other hand, sometimes includes some things that are from, you know, they might be from academic journals, but some academic journals are actually pretty sketchy. So you can actually find some things that are bordering on pseudoscience or are just really poorly uh, done research. Uh, so uh, it's going to give you different results. I actually think these are both great resources. In both cases, you even though the results have been filtered and so they're going to be more dependable, uh, tend to be more valid than just a general Google search, in all three of these cases, you still need to look into where the information is coming from. Is this coming from a highly respected, uh, established scientific journal or some journal that nobody's ever heard of or somebody's personal website or Wikipedia? Each of these things has a different level of sort of trust that you might want to place in it um, and a different uh, sort of level of appropriateness in terms of if you're going to use it to back up your particular paper that you're writing. Okay, so let's talk about what some of the advantages are for each of these uh, types of sources. If you go to just do a general search on Google, I would say that one of the biggest advantages there is it's, it's in general, you're going to be able to find at least some resources on there on the topic you're interested in that are easier to understand. And I, I don't, uh, not everything that you find on Google is going to be easier to understand. Obviously, they're going to find some things that are incredibly verbose and complicated and difficult. But there are some great uh, resources out there, things like, like Wikipedia. There's almost always at, at least a somewhat decent article on Wikipedia on covering, covering, giving you an overview, giving you um, context, right? Context for a particular subject. Uh, what is the general research that's been done? What is this subject about? Uh, what's the state of it at the moment? Uh, Wikipedia is often a great place to go uh, to get that overview. Uh, it gets criticized a lot. You certainly don't want to rely on Wikipedia. To be clear, you should never, for uh, for a research proposal or a research re report, you should never be citing Wikipedia because all the information there is secondary. You want to trace the information back to a reliable and also preferably peer-reviewed source. Um, the nice thing about Wikipedia is it's often reviewed by and edited by uh, by people who have their hands in that subject who are doing research on that subject. So there may be professors or other researchers who are actively maintaining those pages. So they often give really good information. You just don't want to completely 100% rely on it. Um, but the other nice thing is you can go to uh, on a Wikipedia page, you can scroll down uh, to the bottom of the page and it will give references for the various things that it says in the article, at least a good deal of the time. Many of those references are often peer reviewed journal articles that you can then look up using one of these other uh, places like Google Scholar or a library database. You can also find, of course, all kinds of other websites and, uh, and, and magazine and newspaper articles through Google. Uh, and also, I think a, an excellent uh, research is, resource is YouTube. Right? If you search for a subject on Google, you may very well get some YouTube videos or videos from other websites. And often you can get a much better overall idea for what is going on with something by finding a good video on the subject. Then once you've gotten an overview, gotten, you've gotten that basic understanding with Wikipedia or with YouTube, then you can you'll be much better prepared to go and read the scientific art articles that are written on it that are going to be more detailed, more dense, uh, more reliable and valid, uh, probably information in them uh, and more specific, but also a little harder to get through. And, getting through them is a lot easier if you have that that general understanding and general context to begin with. Uh, by the way, uh, sometimes uh, you'll see uh, authors of scientific articles have given, uh, you'll see them on, on YouTube or you can get them on the website for this place, uh, they've given TED Talks. TED stands for Technology, Education and Design um, and it comes from a conference that's given where they get all these different interesting speakers to come in and talk about their work or their ideas. 
sometimes you can find researchers who have given really great TED Talks that are very short and concise and clear and entertaining, but they cover the important features of that person's research. So you can watch that first and then go look at their, uh, at their actual uh, research reports. It'll make the research reports a lot easier to understand. Okay, so once you have that general context, that general idea, it, you can go, go and look up this subject on Google Scholar or in one of the library databases. Um, and by the way, you don't have to do it this way. You don't have to start off with a general Google search. You could start off by searching the literature. Uh, then you could go, uh, you, once you find a topic you're interested in, then you could look it up in a general Google search to see, or on YouTube, to see if there's, if there's any, uh, you know, easier to understand resources for it. So you don't have to do it in any particular order. Um, but anyway, once you're ready to find some scientific journal articles, or other academic work on a subject, you can go to Google Scholar or to one of the library databases. The library databases, uh, these are actually uh, these are actually paid for, right? This is one of the big distinctions uh, that makes this different from the other sources. Is these are paid for by NAU, specifically by Klein Library at NAU. This is I cannot emphasize how great a resource this is that as a student or a teacher at a big university, uh, you get access to all of these databases. The databases, in turn, give you access to articles from these peer-reviewed scientific journals. To actually subscribe to those journals individually may cost a, gr a great deal of money, or uh, to buy a specific individual article, sometimes they're available free. Uh, but often they'll cost some somewhere around thirty dollars an article. So you can imagine if you need if you are doing research on something, or just wanting to read up on some articles, and maybe you want to read up on five different articles in a subject, that will add up very quickly. So, uh, but that is all available to you free because that's part of your tuition, right? NAU pays for all of that for you. Now, with Google Scholar, it is also free, well, it, I should say also free, it is free, um, but uh, it is free to use the search, let me put it that way. You can go on Google Scholar, you can look up whatever articles or other things you want, and that's all free, but then when you click on the link, uh, it'll probably just give you, for many of them, it'll give you a little description of the study, but to see the full text of the article, uh, you are going to have to pay. But the really cool thing is that if you access Google Scholar through Klein Library, then you can get those articles for free. And I will uh, post a link to show you how to do that. But you just basically, instead of going to Google Scholar directly, you, you access Google Scholar through a link on the Klein Library webpage. And then when you search Scholar, uh, anything you find, you should be able to access for free. Um, before I forget, uh, if you come across something that you want access to and it's not available for free, uh, that means the, the library has not uh, subscribed to that particular journal or that database, they haven't paid for it, uh, you can actually put in a request with Klein Library uh, to get that and they can get, uh, within a few days or a week or two, they can get almost anything that you're wanting to get for no cost to you. And a librarian will actually go out and get the article and send it to you. It's a really, really great resource uh, to be able to find, find and obtain any uh, scientific article at no cost. Uh, it would be really nice if, if that were the case for everybody. Uh, and I think it's a really kind of a sad thing that uh, someone outside of a university can't just go out and get the original research and look at it for themselves, at least not until the research is kind of older and, and publicly available. Um, but that's the way it is, and it's definitely something to take advantage of as a student. Okay, now one of the biggest differences between Google Scholar and when you're searching library databases is that library databases are limited. Limited to a specific topic. In contrast, Google Scholar includes everything. When you do a search on Google Scholar, it includes all topics. You can go into the advanced 
uh, search settings and you can filter by a particular topic. But the point is if you just do a general Google Scholar search, you're going to get everything. Whereas if you search in one of the library databases, the database is going to be focused on a particular subject. So for example, one of the most uh, popular uh, databases for this class, or for research methods class, and for psych psychological researchers is called Psych Info. And they talk about this in your book. Uh, they also talk about another, another popular one is Psych Articles. So that can be an advantage because if you search for something in Psych Info, you're not going to get all of these results that are totally unrelated to psychology. Whereas if you search in Google Scholar and you don't put any kind of a filter on the search, it could turn up all kinds of stuff. Uh, and you may have to wade through or try to change your search uh, criteria or the words that you're using in your search uh, to try to turn up something that's more specifically targeted to what you want. The flip side of that is that uh, you may sometimes search for a subject in a particular uh, database and not realize that there's actually stuff that's relevant to your research that's in some other database. So sometimes it's nice to be able to just use Google Scholar because you know that it's not uh, limiting your search in a, in a way that you're not sort of considering. Uh, for example, maybe you are doing some research in psychology, so you're in a, psycho a psychology database, but maybe the research is related in some way to health uh, and health behaviors. So behaviors that make you more or less healthy, maybe those have been researched also in a medical journal, like the British Medical Journal uh, is a very prominent uh, scientific journal that, that sometimes looks at those kinds of things. Um, will Psych Info include that? It might, uh, but there are certainly times when uh, you, you, there may be another journal out there in, a, in something that seems like an unrelated discipline, but that actually has done research related to what you're, you're uh, looking into. Now, when you do research in either Google Scholar or in library databases, uh, you definitely want to be looking at the advanced, advanced search options. Both of these, you know, any of the databases will have advanced search options and Google Scholar uh, has advanced search options. Uh, definitely, um, the library databases have the most, in general, have the most advanced search options. Uh, the, they have certain ways of being highly specific about what it is that you're looking for. So if you're having trouble narrowing down to find the exact articles you want, you're finding articles that are sort of related to what you're interested in, but it seems to be turning up just, you know, maybe you get 3,000 results and a lot of them don't seem to be quite what you want, that might be a time to go to a, a library database and uh, use some of the advanced search features to really narrow down on specifically what you're looking for. Okay, so hopefully that gives you a general idea of what, are, what some of the characteristics are of these different resources and some of the advantages and disadvantages of each one.